This painting of a mystery girl might not even be real. It is not a complex painting, just a simple girl staring at you. But there is something mysterious about her. Her pearl earrings and her eyes are saying something. So let's uncover the mystery of this girl in pearl earrings. The painting and the painter. Girl with a pearl earring is an oil painting by Dutch artist Johannes Vermeer on canvas. He is one of the most well-known painters of the Baroque period. If you are wondering what the Baroque period is, it is an era in the arts that originated in Italy in the 17th century. Still, it flourished everywhere in the early 18th century. It is a style of architecture, painting, sculpture and music. Coming back to painting, Girl with a Pearl Earring is also known as Girl with Turban or Girl with a Headband. The painting depicts a young woman in an exotic dress and a huge pearl earring. You can see the painting in the Moritz Schrie Museum in The Hague. Johannes Vermeer, the man responsible for this beautiful piece of art, produced just 36 works in his entire lifetime. And the mysterious girl with a pearl earring is regarded as one of his best. Unfortunately, the painting is undated, but historians think it might be around 1665. The details about the mysterious girl. The woman in the painting is in a dark, shallow space. The entire focus is on the woman. However, the painter successfully draws the viewer's attention to the woman. With a blue and gold turban, a huge pearl earring, and a gold jacket with a visible white collar, she creates a mystery you can't put your finger on. If you observe Vermeer's other subjects, they are all busy with some mundane daily work, like reading a letter, writing a letter, or the famous painting of the lace maker. Still, the subject of the painting, the girl, is concentrating on the viewer. Unlike his other subjects, the girl is aware of the viewer. She meets the viewer's gaze by turning her shoulder over her head for some reason, a viewer might think she appears as if she's about to speak. That's because her lips are parted. This work is one of the greatest examples of Vermeer's technical expertise and his special interest in representing light. He uses light to create mystery, not just a backdrop or special effects. It is evident from the subject's face. The nuance of his painting can be observed in the reflection on her lips and the earring. This is a great example of his skill in representing the effect of light on different surfaces. The Sphinx Delft and his inspiration. Johannes Vermeer was also known as Jean Vermeer and was born in 1632. He was a Dutch Baroque period painter and most of his paintings used people engaged in daily activities as subjects. He was well known for painting domestic interior scenes of middle class life. He worked slowly and with great care, which is evident from his paintings. He used expensive pigments and was famous for using light as a concept in his paintings. He was moderately successful during his lifetime and was only recognized in his hometown, Delft, and the Hague. However, he produced few paintings and wasn't wealthy, leaving his wife and children in debt after his death. Hans Konigsberger once wrote, Almost all his paintings are set in two smallish rooms in his house in Delft. They show the same furniture and decorations in various arrangements, and they often portray the same people, mostly women. He gained fame in the 19th century and was acknowledged as one of the greatest painters of the Dutch Golden Age. He rose to fame in the 21st century and today all his works are studied by people across the world. And no art curriculum is complete without studying his works. However, Vermeer never went abroad like his fellow Golden Age artists. There weren't many details about his personal life until the 19th century. It is believed that he devoted his life to art and living a content life in the city of Delft. He was named Sphinx of Delft by Thore Burger. Because of the little to no details available about him, all we had was a few registers, official documents, and some comments about his art from other artists. Details about his socio-economic background were added by John Michaels Montius. The details were from the archives of Delft in his artists and artisans in Delft, a socio-economic study of the 17th century in the year 1982. Vermeer first executed his painting in either monochrome shades of grey or with browns and greys and applied more saturated colours over them like most painters of his time. No drawings have been positively attributed to Vermeer. His paintings offer few clues to preparatory methods. There is no other artist who used expensive pigments as lavishly as Vermeer. He created a perfect world by using natural elements of this colour. For example, the earth was umber and the ochre should be warm light in the strongly lit interior reflecting multiple colours into the wall. It is widely believed that Vermeer's work was mainly inspired by his observing Leonardo da Vinci's work. It is evident if you observe the use of light and the object partakes 
of the color of the adjacent object. No object is seen entirely in its natural color. His works are comparable and yet more remarkable. The journey to Morat Shui and its discoveries. The Morat Shui building was renovated in 2012 and the painting traveled to several countries from Japan, Italy and the United States. The painting never failed to draw the crowd's attention in all the places it was in, but the main attraction would be always in its home. So the painting returned to the Netherlands in 2014. The museum investigated the painting for two years and published all the findings in the year 2020. The museum used modern imaging techniques to look beneath the surface. Researchers discovered that the girl had eyelashes and uncovered a green curtain behind the girl. When Vermeer's materials were tested, the resources of the pigments were mapped. It was discovered that he used a pigment derived from the semi-precious stone lapis lazuli that was found only in today's Afghanistan, called ultramarine. Though the pigment was extremely costly, Vermeer was very liberal with its use. The headscarf was painted ultramarine. He used a red pigment derived from an insect living in Mexico and South America for the woman's lips. Recent fame of the painting. Despite his remarkable work, Vermeer is not much famous outside of his native city of Delft. Nevertheless, he earned the fame he deserved in the 19th century thanks to Ottilien Joseph Théophile Thory for reassessing his work. He is a French critique and well known for his pseudonym William Burger. He deserves to have a pseudonym more than any other person in the world. Vermeer earned the reputation of a distinguished painter because of him. But with a girl with a pearl earring, painting didn't get the fame it deserved until the early 21st century. The painting rose to fame after the blockbuster exhibition at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. in the year 1995 and the publication of the best-selling novel, Girl with a Pearl Earring, by Tracy Chevalier in the year 1999. According to the book, the painting's subject is said to be Vermeer's housemaid named Greet. It is believed that she worked in Vermeer's house and later became a paint mixer for him. Pop culture adopted the mysterious girl's story into a movie that was later nominated for the Oscars. The movie cast Scarlett Johansson as Greet and Colin Firth as Vermeer and was released in 2003. So what makes her mysterious? If you are still wondering what makes her mysterious, it's her enigmatic expression and her unknown identity. The same thing makes Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa unique and mysterious. But there is one major difference between Mona Lisa and this unknown girl with huge pearl earrings. It's a type of painting. Mona Lisa was a portrait of a woman. Mona Lisa was real, but this mysterious girl wasn't. This painting is not a portrait. To put it in terms of painting, this is a trony. Trony is a Dutch term for a character. Well, that doesn't mean Vermeer just drew her from his memory. A young woman might have sat in front of Vermeer while he was drawing, but the intention of painting was not to portray her exactly. When Lisa Gerardini, wife of a merchant, sat in front of Leonardo da Vinci, he intended to paint her. She was the subject of da Vinci's painting, but Vermeer's subject is a girl in an exotic dress and pearl earrings. Tell us what you think of the mysterious girl with a pearl earring in the comments. Also, make sure to like and subscribe to never miss an update.